Good morning friends and welcome to the pre-market view. A small tiny economy in Eurozone called Cyprus is driving the global markets down uh, because of the unprecedented move by the Cyprus authorities to tax the bank depositors as a part of the bailout program. Uh, now uh, the risk of uh, this kind of a contagion spreading to Eurozone is very high as most of the economies are facing uh, some kind of a problem and because of which we are seeing the risk of trade uh, across the markets and currencies. Uh, so on the back of that, today morning when we look at the Asian markets, most of the markets are down anywhere from 1 to 2 percent and even the yen is showing a lot of weakness and uh, most of the other global markets be it Eurozone or the Dow. The Futures are suggesting that the opening is going to be weak to the tune of about 1% or little more than that. Talking about the flows for our markets, uh, FIs were net bias in the cash market to the tune of about 1019 crore and the domestic institutions were sellers to the tune of about 589 crore and in the index futures, the FIs were net bias to the tune of about 298 crore. Uh, back home, our markets also continue to show weakness uh, despite a sharp pullback that we saw on Thursday. The market could not sustain that and uh, particularly some of the banking names like ICICI Bank, HDFC Bank, Axis Bank where because of the Cobra expose, uh, some uh, compliance decisions are taken. Even some of the employees who were involved in that uh, expose have been suspended and that did not go down too well with the markets. and. We saw even other pockets like metals and uh, to some extent uh, even the other heavyweights uh, like Reliance Industries uh, etc saw a lot of weakness. Uh, all eyes are clearly on uh, tomorrow's RBI policy meet where the expectations are that we are going to have a 25 basis points rate cut. But given the global backdrop that we have, uh, one doesn't really know whether this would be a sideshow for our markets and on that note let me invite Sadhna to take us through important FNO cues, ideas and strategies that we can have in the FNO markets. Good morning friends, let's have a view on derivatives. On Friday, the markets closed the session in red as banking and reality sectors battered badly on the indices. And on Friday, the short positions were built up in the market as we see around 10,000 shares were added in the open interest and also Nifty futures premium decreased from 30.80 points to 24.50 odd levels. And PCR stands at 1.16 from 1.18 indicating put options activity reduced marginally. And on the options front, 5,700 put strike sites seen a good number of activity and call strike site activity is widespread from 5,900 to 6,200 strike. And implied volatility also increased marginally by 30 basis points to 50 basis points indicating if Nifty manages to close below the level of 5880 we might, we might review our uh, targets today. From intraday perspective one can go long on TCS with a stop loss of 1552.70 and one can go short on Kane India with a stop loss of 299.15. Thank you. Here are the important news and events that we are tracking today. First of all, as I said before, the focus would be on the RBI policy meet which is coming up tomorrow where the general expectations are that we are going to see a 25 basis points rate cut. But given the liquidity situation that the country is in, uh, there are also expectations of a CRR cut so that the banks are able to pass on the benefit of this improved liquidity to the end users. So this is something that the market would be watching out for, particularly for the rate sensitive sectors like banks, auto, real estate, uh, this is going to be an Im extremely important event to watch out for. Government is uh, looking at discussing uh, the sugar decontrol and the food bill part uh, today and uh, in case the sugar industry is decontrolled, uh, then it could uh, actually be a very important uh, uh, policy decision from a sugar industry's perspective because there are uh, measures to increase the excise duty and actually do away with this levy sugar mechanism under which the government is able to get some kind of a quota uh, to be distributed uh, through the ration card shops. So this entire arrangement uh, could actually uh, be revamped. But so far it's at a discussion stage so we'll watch for some kind of an outcome on this matter. Some update on advanced tax payments, uh, the top 30 companies have reported a growth of about 15% uh, as far as advanced tax payments are concerned and particularly the banking and financial services space has reported the highest growth and some of the companies like Mahindra Mahindra also have reported a uh, strong growth but the broader market uh, 
uh, we are uh, hearing that the growth in the advanced tax payment has not been that great. Some further update on the divestment as the government is looking at divesting about 10 percent stake in Coal India which is considered to be qualitatively a better stock for the divestment and the uh, amount that the government is looking at raising is about 20,000 crore. So there could be some pressure on Coal India on the back of that because we have seen that whenever the company uh, goes in for the divestment, uh, the pricing tends to be a little more aggressive and the stock tends to go down. So there could be a shorting opportunity uh, as far as Coal India is concerned. And uh, in another positive development, the Bihar uh, Energy Regulatory Commission has uh, increased the power tariff uh, by about 7% effective uh, next month. So this is definitely positive for companies like PFC and REC, where uh, because of this uncertainty, uh, there has been some kind of a pressure. So you could expect some positive tick on those stocks. LNT is some positive news as uh, the subsidiary company of LNT. Uh, the stake is going to be sold uh, at a price of almost about 2500 crore and some of the buyers uh, or potential buyers could be uh, the names like Khazana International which is the sovereign arm of uh, Malaysia and uh, on the back of that one can go long on LNT with a stop loss of 14.76 and a target of about 15.52 to about 15.80. Some positive news uh, for Core Parenteral as its subsidiary company Goa Formulation has entered into a tie with the German company uh, for the sale of its pharma, pharma manufacturing unit for almost about 200 crore. So one can go long on parenteral drug with a stop loss of 107.5 and a target of about 113 to about 115. JSW seal some negative news as uh, it has put on hold the expansion uh, at its Vijayanagar plant uh, in uh, Andhra Pradesh where the capacity is about 10 million tons for uh, the unavailability of iron ore or iron ore shortage. So one can go short on JSW steel with a stop loss of 714 and a target of about 679 to about 664. That's it from all of us friends. Have a great trading session. See you tomorrow at the same time.